What is up guys, Randomonium here. So I decided to do a little bit of a different video. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people playing the Sonatark bot lane and it feels like that a lot of people really don't understand what the answer to that combination is. It's, a, it's definitely a very annoying uh, bot lane combo. It definitely favors a duo queue in bot and support who know how to abuse it. Um, but I think I've come up with a pretty solid strategy on how to counter uh, Sonatark. Um, I know that a lot of people try to counter Sonatark with a very heavy all-in style of play, like doing like a Leona Draven or you know Blitzcrank or um, a lot of like really like hard-hitting uh, champions. Like Lucian Braum was another one that I've seen people trying to use. I think that that strategy could work, but it's it's not as high probability as a strategy that I'm going to talk about. Um, Doing that all-in style of play, it requires you to get ahead. And if you get like a, a bad uh, mid-roaming timing or a bad jungle gank, it can really set you behind and that strategy becomes completely unviable. And once Sonatara gets level 6, they can usually survive your all-in pressure and they actually love it when enemies try to engage on them. Sonatark are phenomenal at counter-engage. Um, so I think they're trying to go in for these all-in engage style of plays against Sonatark it works pre-level 6, it doesn't work post-level 6 unless you're already really, really ahead, which makes it less uh, reliable than the strategy that I want to talk about, which is poke lanes. Um, and you would think that poke lanes wouldn't go well into Sonatark because traditionally you would think of Sonatark as a sustain lane, and sustain lanes usually do pretty well against poke lanes. Um, but that's not the case. And the reason why it's not the case is that Tarek needs to be in melee range of minions in order to get a lot of his sustain. He needs to be in melee range in order to proc uh, his Targons, and he needs to be in melee range so that he can use his Bravado in order to gain stacks on his Q, which is his healing ability. If you punish him every time he steps up to auto attack a minion, then he then all that healing that he gets from Targons and from his Q is going to be completely completely negated. Um, and Sona typically maxes Q first because she wants to have that real that poke damage so she can uh, you know get that uh, support item racking up gold. So her uh, sustain from her W is not as strong in the laning phase as you would think. And Sona's base stats are really low, which makes her very susceptible to high damage, long range poking champions. Um, so that's why poking lanes are actually really good against. Uh, so in the Tark in the laning phase is that the, the Tark can't step up without taking a ton of damage and if the Sona tries to step up she's too squishy to be able to sustain the barrage from two poking champions. Um, and then out of laning phase, Sona Tarek are really good at counter engage. They're really good at team fighting, but they're really bad at being able to engage onto the enemy team. That's really kind of their their Achilles heel is that they don't have that engage potential that you would get from a lot of other supports or a lot of other laners because you got an enchanter and you've got a warden. So they they're severely lacking in engage potential. So that means that if you stall out. Uh, the fight, if you don't, if you just kind of just poke, 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 and you don't let them engage, uh, you'll wind up ahead. So, uh, Sona Tark are mainly more oriented towards like protect compositions and actually siege compositions. So, two strong sieging champions will actually beat them out uh, outside of the laning phase, which is why poke lanes can be very successful against Sona Tark even outside of laning phase. So the big thing is that you just want to play things slowly and you want to try and bait out the ultimates because Sona and Tarek both have very powerful ultimates and if you're able to poke them enough, eventually you will get them to, you'll bait out one of those ultimates and then you disengage, you wait for the Tarek ultimate to enter, you wait for the Sona to not have that much effect with her ultimate and then that's what you play around in order to get objective. So you poke to bait out the ultimates and then you look for a team fight once the ultimates are down. That's the general strategy in order to beat uh, the Sona Tarek duo. So, what are the champions that I would recommend that you pick up for bot lane in order to counter Sona Tarek? 
Well, for AD carry, I would recommend Varus, Ezreal, Caitlyn, Ash, and Jin. Those are kind of the my top five. There are plenty of others who could work, but you basically are looking for somebody who has either abilities to poke or a long auto attack range, ways that they can punish the Sona and the Tarek, uh, respectively, either the Tarek stepping up to attack melee minions or the Sona trying to step up to uh, use her Q auto combo. For support, I would recommend Zareth, Velkaz, Lux, or Brand. Because all of those champions have a have really strong poke and they deal a lot of damage, a scary amount of damage. This means obviously that you need to have a tanky champion either as your jungler or your top laner. Um, but it's a it's a really good combo, and I'll show off how it's uh, how it's such a good combo. But uh, I got two games for you. It'll show off how you can basically just really just destroy Sonatarik in lane. And I will briefly go into how ineffective Sonatarik is out of lane. Uh, one, because they're really far behind. And then two, because they don't have any way to really engage onto a poking uh, bot laner and a poking support. So I hope you guys enjoy the games. And I'll catch back with you guys after the games are over. All right, what is up, guys? Uh, this is game one. So uh, we can see that we have uh, Varus and Zareth as our uh, bot lane and support. And they're up against the Sona Tarek. It's going to leave the uh, Fog of War off so we can see both team sides. And you'll see uh, how scary this combination is. So you can see my Varus is stepping up, able to get the CS, no problem. And as soon as uh, any time the Tarek steps up or the Sona steps up, we're just punishing them. Just constantly attacking them. Tarek is just in all sorts of trouble already, being forced off the minion waves, denying experience, denying creeps. So, yep, Tarek's already down to about 200 health. We get the level up, and this is pretty much all she wrote for them. But they already get first blood, and that definitely was a misplay from the Tarek. He should have expected the level 2 and uh, backed off before then. But there really was not much they could do. Even if they backed off, they wound up they would have wound up dying at level two or level three anyway. You can see that Sona's just stuck under the tower. She can't get any of her uh, procs off on her support item, the Spell Thief's Edge. Uh, she needs those uh, in order to gain some gold. You can see that already things are looking pretty bad for them and they'll wind up getting uh, a lot worse as things go on. You can see this also means that our team has a ton of pressure. They can start getting uh, tower plates and things like that. Yeah. So they, you can. I'm trying to focus more on the Sona and Tarek. And you can see just how much difficulty they're having. Uh, just CSing or doing anything. So as soon as that E is down, you can see how much damage we're able to put out onto the Sona. Yeah, so they're just basically just hiding under tower this entire time. The Varus is free farming. The Hecarim has not ganked yet. But yeah, it's already looking bad. Like you can see, they, they have plenty of mana, but they're not able to get any of their sustain up. But yeah, as soon as they try to step up, we're attacking. Damage, damage, damage. They come out on the on a rough losing end. And this is with uh, Varus and Zareth not having any mana. And they're still just destroying them in these trades. So if, if Varus, Varus and Ther Zareth had full mana, this would be another kill already. You can see the Hecarim is looking to gank. But we've already got the ward set up. Uh, so our guys are kind of playing back a little bit. They're probably just going to clear this wave and uh, back. I don't know, looks like they're going to continue to stick around. So they're feeling a bit bold, a bit risky. This actually might be a little bit of a misplay from them. But I think they feel like they might be able to get a tower plate before they back. You can see, Tarek can't do anything. He's basically just like a minion right now. He, he has no pressure whatsoever. So our guys are backing on a ward, but that doesn't really matter. So they get their first back off. Sona and Tarek have already backed multiple times, and we can see what the uh, difference in uh, items are. You can see that uh, Varus actually went for a Doran's Ring for that mana 
Zareth has got an upgrade on his uh, item, and we also got a long sword. So they get a little bit of respite. But as soon as they're back in lane, the lane's pushing towards uh, our team, so they're going to be in a bad spot because they really can't step up at all. Zareth lands a great E onto the Sona, winds up chunking her out completely, and yep. There's another kill. And there's not much that they can do about it. This Tark is just completely useless. He's getting zoned off of everything. They try going potentially for the Drake, but there's no way that they can contest it. Zareth gets the roam up first. Oops. Interesting interaction with the Nautilus Q and the Zareth E. Winds up being a pretty good trade for our team overall. Yep, Targ escapes with his life, but he's having a pretty rough day. We'll speed back. He'll get back into the laning phase. Varus can just kind of chill. He can just slowly farm. He's had has a massive advantage now. And as soon as both uh, opponents are in lane, you can see, yep, another kill almost instantaneously. And there's there's just nothing that they can do. It, it's it's just an incredibly oppressive lane. Um, it draws a ton of jungle pressure. That'd be the only way that they can potentially get a, get around this is if the Hecarim just like camped uh, their lane like crazy. But the Hecarim is not camping their lane, and you can see that the Sona is like hiding behind tower. She can't do anything. And as soon as yeah, Zareth hits level six, he goes for the ultimate. Doesn't wind up getting the kill, but. It's just an absolute slaughter down here in uh, the bot lane. So they get another great back off. Already got the serrated dirk completed. Uh, Zareth has got the lost chapter, which means his mana regen is going to even be better. And yeah, things are looking not good at all. So you can see uh, CS is pretty even since they're kind of sharing the CS, but it's actually better on the Varus because uh, he's winding up getting a bunch of gold. And Sona's not really making use of that that support item that she bought because she can never get in range to actually uh, land her poke. So she's never actually proccing any of her uh, any of her what it's called uh, basically the gold that she gets from landing spells. So she's not getting any gold. She's got 281 gold from that. Meanwhile, uh, the Zareth got over 500 gold from his support item, and we have already another kill. Anytime. Uh, they walk into lane. They wind up getting killed. Yep, another kill. So they're basically killing uh, both the Sona and the Tarek under tower. Not much that Sona Tarek can do because if they push their ultimates, then Varus and Zareth will just back off and just wait for the ultimates to expire or wait for, you know, you know as long as they avoid the stun from the Sona then um yeah there's not much that sonatar can do we've already almost got four plates gone and we're only at the uh 12 minute mark not even the 12 minute mark yeah so another another time they're completely pushed out of lane they pop the ultimates they're able to get some decent damage down they do get the shutdown but uh, overall, the Zareth and the uh, and the Varus are completely in control. We'll just continue to watch this until the first tower falls, which won't be too long. You can see Varus can just keep pushing to his heart's content. He's already got his dust blade complete. Another stun down. They're trying to defend as much as they can. Tower plating has eventually fallen, so there's no more gold to be gotten. There's the ultimate from the Zareth that kills the Sona again, and there's the first tower going down, which means that's the end of laning phase. And you can see that Varus is 513 with 80 CS. Uh, Zareth is 217. Um, the Varus has already got a completed item. 
Uh, Zareth is about to have a completed item. Well, he's got his uh, his Eye of Frost completed, but he's almost going to have his uh, next item complete. So, absolute domination. This winds up unlocking our Varus and our Zareth, and we wind up just completely stomping the rest of the game. So, let's move on to game two. All right, what is up, guys? Randomonium here, back with game two. So, in this game, we've actually got a Varus and a Brand. I'm playing my Amumu. Um, so, they leash for me. And they're playing against the Sonatark again. You can see already, just tons of damage. The Tark tries to step up for those first few minions. Got punished pretty severely. Tark's already half health. He's trying to see us to the best of his ability. And that's the first blood already. So two minutes, 30 seconds in, they've already got the first blood. Anytime the Tark tries to step up at all, he gets severely punished. Um, and there's not much that the Sona can do to help, because if the Sona stepped up to try and help him, then she would get really punished. The Brandon and Varus can pretty much push to their heart's content. They've got this massive minion wave. Sona's almost dead. And they can continue to just push, 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 pressure, pressure, pressure. Anytime uh, Tark uses his E and misses, that's basically their go button to just go after them uh, and there's not much that Sonatar can do to stop them so yeah you can see anytime that that tar accepts an auto attack range he's getting auto attacked yep getting auto attacked so a lot of his uh sustain is being mitigated by the fact that he's just constantly taking auto attacks to the face over and over again And even with their sustain, even with the shielding they have, uh, they're just having all sorts of trouble. So Varus and Brand get off a good back. They're at a significant CS advantage, significant gold lead. Varus gets his Sterix, or sorry, his uh, Serrated Dirk on the first back. And now Sonatark in this really interesting spot where they want to try and push this wave in. I don't know if they're going to be able to. Looks like they just barely get there in time. The Varus wound up rotating up to contest the Scuttle Crab. Uh, Rek'Sai wound up flashing. Our Akali winds up getting the kill. So yeah, it winds up being a bad day for Rek'Sai as well because uh, Rek'Sai doesn't have any pressure in bot lane. Varus is basically free to push. We have complete vision control. They'll wind up clearing up that ward potentially. Yep. There's very little that uh, they can do. They actually walked over this ward here, so we know that they're trying to set up for a four-man dive. This is actually a good play from them, trying to help out this Son Tarek, but we've sniffed it out with our ward positioning. I'm just sitting there, staying still. That way the uh, Rek'Sai can't see me at all. And now as soon as we know that they've gone, you can see instantaneously the posture changes. We're poking again. Rek'Sai comes down to relieve pressure. I'm already there. And we wind up getting the kill on the Rek'Sai. Yeah, this allows us to get our first Ocean Drake, which means that the poke is going to be even more oppressive. We get the increased mana regen. Uh, any type of poke they try to do onto my bot lane is going to be negated by the... Uh, healing that the ocean drake provides and uh this is a pretty bad spot for them so varus can just continue to farm he's going a little not too aggressive because he knows that the brand is backed he's playing a bit safer but as soon as brand gets back into lane he can basically uh do a ton of damage to them so yeah you can see he's already He's already posturing. He knows Brandon's almost there. And then instantaneously, Sona, the ult comes out. They wait it out. And then they start trading back. And you can see that they're able... Even though the Sona and Tari got off both their ultimates, um, the Brand and the Varus were able to counteract them pretty heavily. They just played it slow, waited out the Tarik ultimate. Uh, and then, yeah, this winds up getting 
significant amounts of gold. All this experience and CS is dying to tower. So Tarek and Sona don't get any of it. Uh, and yeah, it winds up being a pretty bad day for them. So speed up since they recalled. Let's see what items they've got. As you can see, the Varus already has his completed uh, Ghost Blade. Uh, the Brand has his uh, Sorcerer Shoes. As soon as they come back into lane, they can just zone them off of experience almost completely. Okay, see how far back Sona and Tarek have to play. Tarek can't get any of his Targon's procs. They did know that I was there as the Amumu. There was a ward, but now we've cleared out that vision. We're baiting them into a fight. Yeah, so we're just waiting here. Rek'Sai is trying to help them out, but uh, they're in a bad spot. You can see, like, even under tower, you know, we don't care. You can just keep poking them, keep pressuring them. And they're just barely able to survive, but they're going through a lot of their mana. And they're losing plates. <clears throat> so this sets us up for another uh, Ocean Drake, potentially. Yeah, you can see Katarina is trying to come down. Rek'Sai keeps trying to come down. They keep trying to help this bot lane, but it's, they're not getting anything from it. They wind up going for the smite steal. I wind up getting it. They pop the ultimate. Everybody uses their ultimates and they wind up getting completely decimated. This allows us to get bot tower. This is going to unlock the Varus into other lanes. And that's going to be pretty much the end of the game. We wind up snowballing the game out of controllable from this spot. So at this point, it's 15 minutes in the game. We have two ocean drakes. The Varus is 205. The brand is 204. Uh, you can see how much of a massive of a gold lead they have over the Sona and Tarek uh, duo. And yeah, that's pretty much all she wrote. So hope you guys enjoyed that game as well. All right, so that is the video. I know that the Sona and Tarek in both of those games weren't amazing. They're not, you know, super, you know, top 200 players or anything like that. Uh, they definitely made plenty of mistakes. But I firmly believe that, that regardless of who the Sona and Tarek were, uh, in the in these videos that they would get demolished by a poking lane if you have you know equal skill level players uh, Sona Tark is going to lose uh, the vast majority of the time to a poking bot lane so I think this is a, a very strong strategy that not a lot of people are talking about um, so I'm definitely am curious to see what your results are if you're able to try this out in game what uh, what happens uh, we've had a lot of success with it in our games. We I don't think we've ever lost to a Sona Tarek because we always just smash them uh, with a poking uh, lane matchup. So uh, yeah, it works for us. Hopefully it works for you. I would love to hear your guys' comments on how you guys deal with Sona Tarek and whether or not you've tried using poking lanes. And if you have tried, what were your results? Uh, you can definitely, uh, you know, just like write down your comments in the comment section below. We've also got a Discord where you can post videos and things like that. So if you have a video of your laning phase against a Sona Tarek, I'd be happy to take a look at that and see what happened. Stuff like that. So anyway, hope you guys have a fantastic day. This is Randomonium signing off.